Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and welcome to our next tutorial for the ATR. In this video we are going to discuss whether you want to do a pushback or a powerback. We are going to show you how to start the engine and taxi to the runway. So let's get right into it. The first question we need to ask ourselves is are we going to do a pushback or are we going to do a powerback? For those of you who are not familiar with the difference between the two, a pushback is what you're all known from your 737s and A320s. A powerback means reversing out of the gate using engine power. Now, due to the risk of foreign object damage and due to the risk of um, bad visibility behind, ATR operators are usually going to favor doing a pushback over a powerback. So, in most airports where you have ground staff and pushback tucks available, you are actually going to do a pushback. However, if there is no ground staff available, or if you are in an airport that is simply so small that there simply is no ground staff, then you are going to do a powerback, which means starting the engines on the gate and then reversing out of the gate yourself. Now, for today's video, normally at an airport like Tenerife North, which is quite big, we would have sufficient pushback tucks available. And we would simply be um, using a pushback tuck to push back onto the taxiway and then start our engines over there. However, thanks to lovely GSX not recognizing the hotel mode of the engine correctly and thinking that we have an engine running, we cannot request the pushback anymore since our engine is in hotel mode and this means we will start our engines on stand and do a power back. Alright, let's get straight into it and what we're going to do is basically this. In the previous video anticipating a pushback we have turned off the nose wheel steering. We're gonna turn this back on again since for a pushback we will need nose wheel steering. Now let's go ahead. In the last video we have completed our before propeller rotation checklist. So now we're going to go ahead and actually start rotating our propellers. Engine number two is running in hotel mode at this point. If you haven't started it into hotel mode yet then please do it now. Okay, so we verify the left and the right areas of the airplane are clear. Press the auxiliary hydraulic pump. And then we can get rid of the propeller brakes. So we're going to open the cover and switch the propeller brake off. This illuminates the ready light and the unlock light. And now we can observe our propeller starting to run up as it has done already when looking at the screen. So with the NP stabilized, which is the propeller RPMs, we are going to set our engine number two condition lever into the auto position which is going to run the propeller up for our normal taxi position. We observe the single channel light go out and the low pitch light coming on at this point. Okay, when the NP is stabilized at around 71% which it should do in a moment, when it's stabilized over there we can go ahead with the um, rest of our procedures, which is basically turning on the ProPeed over here, setting the anti-ice as necessary. Now, we don't need any anti-ice for this flight since it's lovely warm outside on the Canary Islands, so the anti-ice remains off. Check the hydraulic triple indicator on the system's display, which we have up here. So we can see that we've got 3000 PSI, 3000 PSI and 3000 PSI. Then we can carry out our anti-skid test, which basically gives us the wheel anti-skid light and the um, indication up here. Okay, and now that this is complete, we can extend the flaps into the 15 position. And now we can go ahead and start engine number one. So. Engine number one start is the same as the engine number two used to be earlier, which is select the start A and B position, verify the systems page is shown, press the starter, and then with our NH passing 10%, like now, we are going to switch the conditional lever into the feather position, 
And now our engine is starting up. Quite easy. Okay, the engine is up and stable. Condition lever into auto. Observe no single channel indication and the low pitch indication showing. And with that we can make sure our AC wild generators are on and operating. Check that the um, BTC is in the open position. Make sure the cockpit com hatch, which is the one down here, basically a little door to the outside where you can hand documents through is uh, closed. Okay, we go on towards our transponder, switch it on, make sure the uh, nose field steering is turned on. On the overhead panel we check that there is no light illuminated and we can switch the engine starter back off. And with that we are now ready for the before tax checklist. Let's go ahead and run that. Flight warning system is recalled, cockpit com hatch closed, condition levers 1 and 2 in the auto position, anti-ice as required, TRU is on and checked, anti-skid test performed, flaps 15, nose wheel steering is on, before taxi checklist complete. Okay, with the before taxi checklist complete we can now get ATC clearance for our power pack procedure. So we're going to turn on the taxi and takeoff lights. And now things get a little bit more interesting as we can finally start moving our airplane. Alright. So we check the left is clear. We check the right is clear. Bring our condition levers back into the reverse and release our parking brake. And now we can start slowly moving backwards. Like this. Don't get too fast during the power back and do not do any abrupt movements there. So we are not going to do any abrupt movements so that um, the airplane doesn't topple over. Keep in mind you've got quite a bit of airplane moving backwards. If you were to brake now the entire plane would dip backwards and therefore likely get a tail strike. Okay, we are going to start turning our airplane and it doesn't seem to have enough power to get uphill. That is fine. If we can't get on any further, we are not going to force anything. We are simply going to stop the airplane in position over here. Okay, that is the power back procedure basically completed. If you are not going uphill like we are right now, then you would of course not um, have stopped and you should have aligned yourself with the taxi line. However, if it doesn't want to work, then it doesn't want to work. That's fair enough. So, taxi light is on. We can now start with our taxi. Basically, with very little forward thrust, the airplane should already start going forward, as we can see. And you can more or less leave the power levers in the idle position and that's going to be sufficient in order to taxi the airplane like we are doing right now. So this is pretty much all with the um, power levers in the idle position. You can see the airplane taxis very nicely. And according to the ATR standard procedures, during taxi first of all we are going to do a brake check. And as we can see, the plane is braking nicely. And then we are going to cross-check our instruments, making sure that the compass is rotating with us as we are turning the airplane, making sure that we've got correct indications up here. And bringing up our navigation display, we also check the ground speed is correct up here. Okay, finally, during the taxi, the crew member number two, so basically the first officer, is supposed to check up our flight guidance panel. So we only do this during taxi, which is interesting, but if that's how they designed it, then that's how they designed it. So what we're going to do is as follows. We're going to press heading mode, which is going to engage heading select low. We are going to engage nav mode, which is going to um, LNAV, 
and then we're going to press the EOS button twice, which is going to arm the pitch hold mode. And that is the modes in which we are going to take off. At the same point, also make sure your initial altitude is set correctly so that the auto flight system can engage correctly after takeoff. Now, let's talk about why we are using the modes like this for a moment. Contrary to, for example, the Airbus and the Boeing, once you lift off in the ATR, your roll mode is automatically going to transition to the mode that was armed before takeoff. So we've armed LNAV. So as soon as our nose is going to come up, LNAV is going to engage automatically. Also, once we are passing an altitude of 400 feet, we can switch to speed hold mode manually, and that is going to engage the airplane in speed hold, which is going to be our default climb mode. At the same moment, let's also quickly look to the left of our speed tape, where we see the magenta speed bug. If this wasn't magenta, you can switch between manual and automatic speed control using the button you have down here, like this. It is standard ATR philosophy to always use the um, magenta speed bug for the departure, which is the managed speed mode. Okay, reaching our runway, we can quickly go over the before takeoff procedures and the taxi procedures. So let's start with the taxi procedures. We are going to check that our airplane is basically ready for departure by using the takeoff config test button that we have down here. Note that I am going to hold it while I press it. So press and hold, and we can see the takeoff config test OK indication on the engine display up here. Pressing this button is also going to bring the before takeoff checklist up as pending on the procedures menu. Okay, so we have carried out any of our checks. We have revised our takeoff briefing through the taxi, have we? And that's pretty much it. With that, we are all prepared for the B4 takeoff procedure, which we are going to carry out right now and then read the checklist thereafter. So, gust lock release, check the flight controls, and this is a very important step. If you forget the gust lock, you will not have flight controls available during your takeoff. So this is very, very important. Next up, we're going to go to the TCAS, make sure it is in auto. The transponder is going on and altitude reporting is off now, so that we see the transponder 1 altitude indication up here. Weather radar as required, we are going to switch it on to de for today's departure. Then the airflow is normal, that's the uh, little button you have up here well, up here in between, so the airflow is normal. Overhead panel is scanned for any lights except the anti-ice lights if required. And then we have obtained our lineup clearance, so we can now go ahead, switch on the lights, and we can start the lineup thereafter. Finally, let's run the before takeoff checklist. Now, normally when you have time on the runway, available, you should only run the checklist when you are lined up on the runway. Otherwise, we can also read it to the majority at the holding point and then only do the last um, point once we're actually lined up. But since we have time available today, let's go ahead and line up ourselves on the runway and then we're going to start our um, before takeoff checklist. Do note that if you are flying online and you have air traffic control, then you should do the checklist at the holding point except for the last item, just so that you minimize the time you spend on the runway. Okay, we are lined up, synchronize the heading, now we can do the before takeoff checklist. Takeoff briefing performed, gas block is down here, off, flight controls checked, transponder and TCAS, you can see the two showing green up here, checked, airflow, normal, Cabin crew advised, engine bleeds on external lights. Up here, everything except the logo light, and the logo light would be on if it was dark. On lateral flight director bar, we see over here, centered. So keep in mind, this is in heading select, and um, therefore we have matched the heading as we lined up. And rudder cam is centered before takeoff checklist complete. And with that, we are all ready to go. 
However, the takeoff is going to be a case for its own tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this one interesting. If you did, then do let me know in the comments below. As always, like, comment and subscribe. And if you really like what I'm doing, why not become a channel member, which is going to give you exclusive early access to new videos before they are released for everyone else. However, if you don't want to join as a member, you can always support me with a one-time donation through Buy Me A Coffee, which you can find linked in the video below as well. Thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to see you all on the takeoff tutorial.